Hello, welcome to Switched On, Paul speaking. And today looking at a new game that's going to be coming out on the eShop, and that is RPG Maker MV. This comes from the great guys over at NIS America, and is out today in America, uh, which is the, what is today's date by the way? Where are we? The 8th of September uh, in the US. So this is out today in America, and on the 11th of September in the UK. And what this is, is a game that allows you to create your own RPG games. And it is absolutely huge, massively complex. So I'm not going to go into a, a wealth of details now. I'm just going to give you an overview and my thoughts from using it. Probably coming from more of a, a programming background as I've sort of dabbled a little bit with game development over the last six months. But I just thought I'd give you a quick overview of it. Um, so here's the title screen. You can create a new game. You can play a game that you've already created or downloaded. The, uh, the Maker Forum here is where you can upload your games and search for new games. And the Nintendo eShop will allow you to add on some new content. There is actually a free player that's coming out as well, the RPG Maker uh, MV Player. Which I believe allows you to, when you've uploaded your games, allows you to download other people's games for free. And I also believe that's cross-platform with at least the Xbox One. I'm not sure if it's cross-platform with PS4 and PC, but um, certainly Xbox One and Switch are compatible. Let's have a look at the Maker Forum and just show you how that works. You can search for a game, you can post a game, so you can upload your, your creation. And then you've got submissions, you check your posted work, and then there's a download list of games. So if you're going to search for a game, and you can see here it takes you to this little uh, overview screen. You've got new arrivals at the top. And then the top five daily downloads underneath and then you can also uh, search for weekly downloads monthly downloads and the top total ranking uh, games so you can see that the backlog odyssey uh, black <laughs> backlog odyssey is uh the highest rated game currently but obviously that's going to change over the coming weeks and months i'm just going to grab the the first one here i've actually already downloaded it, but just to show you you had uh, click on wrath of the vampire lord that somebody's created here. Get a little bit of blurb, some tags at the top. So it's RPG, fantasy, combat free, and uh, they've tagged it tech demo. So obviously it's not a complete game, but there's a bit of blurb there. And when it was updated, and then you would do download. You can also review or report it. But if you download it, it would then come into your play game section. So Wrath of the Vampire Lord. Let's fire that up. See what this is all about quickly. And um, it really is as easy as that. Just download the game. Took a little while to download. Took a few minutes to. To download the game from the forum, as I say, when the uh, the player comes out, um, you'll be able to browse and download that without owning RPG Maker. Just anybody can, can grab that. But this is the sort of uh, game that you'll be able to make. This is a game that somebody's made. Uh, speed up the text here, a little bit of blurb about a story. What I'll do in a second, we'll just have a quick look at this and then I'll take you into the editor and give you my, my thoughts on that in a second. But uh, overall, it's... Uh, if you really want to make RPGs, then this is a really solid choice. So, here's a bit of, bit of story from someone called Luca. Skip through that. And here we go. This is the RPG. So, it's like some sort of uh, castle or mansion here. Different rooms. When you uh, make the game, I'll show you in the uh, in the map editor in a minute. But you know, you can make quite sprawling worlds. And you can make overworlds, and then uh, go into you know, towns or village areas or mountains. So here you go, you approach the uh, dark vampiric Lord Zodius, and uh, there's an event trigger there as you approach them. Again, I can show you that quickly, but triggers this bit of text. And there you go, you can input all this text yourself. Obviously a bit of a pain. You probably would want to get a keyboard maybe to speed that process up. And there you go. So that's just a little introduction that somebody's made. Speed through this, and then we'll get into the editor. But um, you know, the the game is basically limited to how much you want to put into it. Really, it takes a long while to to make stuff. There's no doubt about that. Let's just start a new project, and I'll just show you it quickly. So the first thing you do is give you a project a name. Uh, I don't know. Let's just call it Project X, and give it a game title now the game title will be different to the project title it can be the same but basically your project name is what sort of everything's stored under but the game title is what your actual your game is called 
uh, you can change like the icon and the background of the, the title screen and stuff like that. So we click OK and we'll just wait a few seconds for it to load up. And when it loads in, you start with this blank canvas. Now, first thing I would say is the controls are probably about as good as they can be. Maybe would have liked an option for a pointer that you would have on a PC. Um, there is a tutorial that takes you through all the basics and you know within that early doors is uh, how to control the game and get around the menus, but it is a little bit finicky. So what you do basically, you can see I've got my cursor at the top, the top bar at the moment. Um, a lot of this would be self-explanatory, but you've got tool tips that pop up as well. So you've got undo, you've got the map editor, you've got an event editor, then you've got some tools, you've got a pencil, you can draw squares or ellipses, paintbrush to fill areas. Then you've got what's called a shadow pen, which means that you can uh, add shadow effects to like walls and things to make them look more 3D. You can zoom into the world and out of the world or just uh, reset it back to a one-on-one. -on -one. We'll come back to this option in a minute. This is the database. This is probably the, the biggest and most complex uh, option you're going to be looking at, but we'll come back to that. Uh, sound effects, event searcher, if you've got any events, the character creator, which is pretty awesome. I'll show you in a second. And this one here is the play test your current game which we can do, but there's nothing really going on at the minute. So you move across there, press A to select your icon. Now if you press Y, you'll jump around these windows. You see like the big blue outline, we'll jump to the different sections. So you've got the toolbar, the map, the tile set, and then the, um, what would they be called, maps I suppose. We'll show you how each of these works in a second. So the first thing you probably want to do is come here, make sure you're on the map editor, make sure you're on the pencil, come over to the tile set, so press uh, Y a couple of times. And then you can see at the bottom there, you've got some tabs, A, B, C, and R. So we've got A, the sort of the A tiles, the B tiles, and they scroll down now. We've got C tiles, which again, just another page of tiles. There are different themed tiles as well, which we'll get to in a second when we look at creating a new map. And then R is regions, which is, uh, to define certain areas that you can trigger with, with events. You can sort of paint regions over the map. And uh, as they're numbered, you can sort of use those numbers as a reference when you come back to do events. So let's take, take a basic tile here. Let's take, I don't know, uh, this sort of dirt path. And then uh, you press on that and you get the uh, cursor come over here to the map. Just hold down the cursor and paint some tiles. Like that, if we press Y, we jump back to the tile set. So let's pick some trees. Paint some trees around the edge of the pathway like that. Probably something you would have in an RPG. Paint them this way. Now if I use the, if I go up to the bar at the top, come across to the square, I can then draw a sort of squares worth of trees. Sort of fill a nice big area in like that. Uh, and let's just do one more thing. Let's quickly jump here and maybe put some water in. Let's have kind of a, a lake or something over here. And there you go, as you can see, you can kind of build that map up. You can get the buildings if you go to one of the other tile sets. Uh, you've got sort of these multi-tiled buildings. You see they've got sort of multiple, they spread over multiple tiles. So let's try this sort of tower. If we take the first bit of the tower, it over here at the edge of there. So you can see there we've got the first part. Go back to the tile set, click on the top part and add that. So you can see there we built a tower. Um, if we take the this building here, this is actually in four parts. So we add that bit, press Y to jump back to the tiles, press that bit to put the next part in, back to the tiles to do the top left, and back to the tiles to do the top right. So you can see there you build up, you know, a house there so it looks pretty cool nice graphics sort of things you'd expect uh, in a sort of pixel art RPG press the plus button anytime we can save and play test it just quickly saves and then it will jump back to the sort of launch of our game so we can start a new game and here we are so here's our party and here's the map we started drawing out at the minute you can walk across everything. You can also block those off if you want to. You can sort of raise them up so the people, uh, the characters can't walk on them. But here at the minute we've sort of got a big empty map. Doesn't really seem to, uh, no sort of interactivity, but it gives you a bit of an idea. Press start 
uh, plus, sorry, and go back to the editor. And we can carry on editing. So that's how you'd build up your map. So what we're gonna do now is build a, or oh, let's have a look at the character editor before we go too much further, because I really like this character editor. It's got a lot of options. You can see here, um, all these different options, face, front hair, rear hair, beard, ears, eyes, eyebrows, and so on. You can really create a you know a, quite a custom character, and you can see the sprite sheet there in the preview window of uh, how your character will look. So if we let's just play around with some, well, let's do randomize actually, and you can see when you do randomize, it changes all the different things, but also your little sprite sheet, your animation of all the sort of states of the character will will change as well. Now it must be infinite combinations. I wouldn't even like to guess how many combinations of character you could create and it's everything from sort of fantasy stuff all the way up to you know modern day or you know, what's this here like a ninja so you can see if we give this ninja some glasses and you can see it's reflected there in their portrait pictures sort of the bigger picture of their head and also all of the little sprite sheets get glasses as well so really really cool you can create lots of these characters customize them to your heart's content you've got male female and children variations as well really really good i mean this would take if you was uh, i go back to the point that i've been sort of looking at game development if you're just drawing these yourself it would take hours and hours to create a sprite sheet like that and, you know you first you've got to design it but then you've got to draw it out then draw all the different sort of frames of animation it would take hours of patience and time but here in rpg maker a few clicks and you've got your, your characters all ready to go. So that's really cool. We'll come out of that. And uh, you can make NPCs, you can make your sort of hero characters, uh, loads of stuff. So the next thing we're gonna look at is this uh, database. I sort of threatened it a, a little few minutes ago, but let's have a look at this. This is basically everything that controls most of the items in your game. Now you can see down the left-hand side are all the tabs. You can use L and R to flick through these tabs. So here are your actors. And this is where you would add new characters, whether NPCs or heroes or enemies. You'd add them all down here. Different classes, and you can make new classes up, or you can edit the classes that are in here. You can see here, you've got you know this class hero, the XP curve. You can change that. You can change parameters of like how you level up and how powerful your levels get as you level up. Really in depth. Skills, you can create your own skills. I mean, look at the options. It's just unbelievable the amount of information that you can change in this game. And like I said at the start, if you've got the time and patience and willingness, but you know you haven't necessarily got the knowledge of how to create games in coding, you know, this is all visually based. Drag and drop, you know, change options, and you can make a fully playable, massive RPG. And it really is just down to your imagination and time. So items here, you can create new items and have what effects they have, who they can be used on, when they can be used. Weapons, the same. It comes with, you can see it comes with some presets here. You've got sword, axe, cane, bow. Or, you know, most of these things come with presets. Armor here, it's got shield, hat, cloth, and a ring. But again, you can add your own. Enemies, got bat, slime, an orc, and a minotaur already. But again, add your own. Troops, this is when you create um, groups of enemies to fight and when they appear. States, so like uh, status effects, so if you get um, dazed or blinded, uh, all of those things can be added here. You know, you can make your own ones up and what effects it has on the character. Uh, different animations when you get hit or when you're attacking. It's unbelievable the amount of time this must have taken to make. Different tile sets, different events. This is the system, so um, more general overview. So like here you can change lots of stuff about your game generally, but like one of the things I will point out here is over on the options on the right hand side, you can choose whether to use side, bat side view battles or front view, depending on what sort of you know old school sort of RPG you wanna make. I prefer side view battles, so I'm gonna tick that just for now. Uh, game info. Who made it, when they made it, little bit of blurb about it, what the title screen looks like. Uh, what's this, different regions, different types of things, so how to name the different types of things. And again, different terms, what you wanna call things. So, 
again, absolutely wealth of information. We're going to apply that and OK. As I say, I don't want to go over every option here because it would just be impossible. I just want to show you the basics of how it works, really. Um, we're going to come down here to the map region here. And we're going to add a new map. So you press X. You press X on a lot of different things to sort of bring up a contextual menu. So I've gone onto our game X here to say we want to add a map to the main sort of game. Or you can press X here and sort of add a sub map to map one. But we're going to add a new overall map. And again, you can go to the sections here, give it a name. So we just call it, I believe it, a map two. You can choose the tile set you want. So you see here the different types of tile set. So we need this to be maybe an outside. What background music you want. What images you use, whether it's got parallax scrolling even. And here are the encounters. We're going to come back to that in a second. I'm going to show you how to add enemies to the game. But we're saving that, pressed OK. And you see now we've got a second region. So we go back to map one. This is our first region. Could be like our overworld. Takes a couple of seconds to load. And if we added an event, we could then let the player jump to map two, which we could uh, create. Let's see if we can edit some other map two quickly. Let's go back to the toolbar at the top, do a flood fill. And again, we'll just use, let's make this a, maybe a snowy region. So we just flood fill that. Mind you, it's just white, isn't it? It's not so much snow. Uh, let's just do grass again. So there we go, we just made a new grassy region. Oh, on the wrong tool, but that's okay. This can be like long grass. We'll go back up to the toolbar, go back to our pencil, and let's add some, some bushes. Oh, it's like a bushy path, isn't it? So there you go, it could be something a little bit oriental, isn't it? It looks sort of like rice fields or something. Some walls in, maybe. How's that going to look? Oh, it's like a stone path. I don't know. As I say, let your imagination go wild with it, and that uh, you'll make some cool maps, I'm sure. But let's go back to to map one. I just want to show you. Last thing I want to show you quickly is just how to add a battle and show you the battle system. But overall, as I say, I really, really enjoyed my time with RPG Maker. It's um. Probably outside the scope that I've personally got time to sit and dedicate to myself. Uh, so that time is probably probably better spent for me to actually learning coding with Game Maker Studio. But um, yeah, if you want to make games and you haven't got that sort of uh, background in coding, then definitely recommend this for you. And I'm going to go over here to database. And go into... Troops. And let's say we want some slimes. So here's some slimes. You can even design how they look. You can sort of move them around like that. So we want our slime, two slimes to appear in our battle. So we're going to go down to, as I say, it's a bit finicky to get out of menu options and stuff. Save that, go back to the map, go back to our map view, press edit on map one. And you can see we've got this big uh, section here for encounters. We're going to add an encounter, and this is who you choose what enemies you want to pierce. We're going to use our slimes. Now, this here, this waiting is how often, uh, or the, you know, the, the chance of that. Uh, enemy appearing. So for example, if we weighted our slimes here with one, the number one, and if we added some other enemies, some orcs maybe with a weight of three, that means the random encounter would uh, throw up orcs more than slimes because it's got a heavier weighting. You can then choose whether you want the uh, event to appear on uh, the entire map or whether you want to specify it by a region. As I said, those uh, region numbers that I showed you earlier, that under the R tab of the tile set, but we're going to set this to the entire map. 
and OK. And OK that. I wish I could show you more. I mean, I would, you know, probably like to do a series on this or something, but it just literally comes down to time. But I just wanted to get something up for you just to show how good of a game this is and just to give you my recommendation um, to, to pick this up. Let's save and play test this one with our random encounters added and see if we can uh, get some slimes come up. We'll wander around until we get the, the slimes. Let's see, we wander, 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 wander. There you go, boom, into a battle. A slime emerged. You can see we've got a, a side on battle view. Have we chosen the options? And we can choose our characters here. We can either fight or escape. Let's try fight. So Harold's going to attack slime A. Therese is going to attack slime A. Marsha can attack slime B. And Lucius can attack slime B. And there we go, the battle plays out. Again, this will turn this, this, uh, uh, depend on turn order or speed, depending on what you set on it. So the slimes attack back. Let's get the attacking again. I think we're trying to scope, but the slimes have got a lot of health. Again, it's something in the. Um, settings that you can change you can change sort of uh, how much hp characters have enemies have how um, how easy they are compared to what level you are that kind of thing i mean basically if you like old school rpgs there's everything here that you would want in an rpg there's a dialogue system there's a choice system so if you make N npcs you can walk up to them have you know multiple multiple lines of um branching dialogue with choices so you know if you pick one choice something else will, will happen compared to if you pick you know, another choice from the dialogue box it's just massive so check it out there'll be loads of videos around because as i say this game's been going on the pc for absolutely years there's some great tutorials out there how to do stuff really recommend picking those up um from what i've seen in reviews i've quickly looked at over the last few days as the embargo was um friday i think or over the weekend uh, it's reviewed really well on the switch people are really liking it and uh, as I say, m myself too, I really recommend it to you. So that's RPG Maker MV out today in America and out on Friday in the UK. I think it's £44 or £49.99. £44.99 in the UK, $49.99 in America. But as I say, for that, you're getting practically an you know, infinite number of games you can make. Absolutely worth it with the amount of stuff they've put into this game. So let me know if you're going to be picking this up or you've played it before on the PC. And uh, be interesting to see what you think of it. But until then, I will thank you all for watching and see you all next time. Cheers, everyone. Bye-bye.